a corner back there for the turning cord. The turning cord functions independently from the thermostat and the heating elements, which is a good thing. It means you could set your incubator up to turn the eggs for two weeks while you're gathering eggs without using the heating element. And that's a very good way to do it. I've done it successfully many, many times. The heating element, as you can see, has increases if you bring it this way, decreases if you bring it that way. It takes a good quarter of a turn to make much difference at all. So don't be afraid to give it a wide swing when you really need to change it fast. So um, then you watch for when the indicator light is on. It's on now because we're above temperature or below temperature. So it's trying to bring it back up. And it goes off and then it comes down and then it clicks back on again, just like any other kind of heaters indicator light that you've ever seen. You want to watch it as closely as possible for its first maybe 10 cycles of on and off to read where is it coming on. You have to have an independent thermometer with this model. There isn't a thermometer you can read. We add our thermometer and relative humidity hygrometer in there. So we read it and if it's 99, we want this to go a little bit higher. I like it to stay at between 100 and 100.8 for chickens, 100.8 being the high end. See now it went off already. It's saying it's warm enough. I've got, I put it just far enough back there where you can't see it, of course. So I'm going to read that with the light. Oh, okay. It went off at 99.1. Uh, that's a little low for it to be going off, but that's still good. As long as when it comes on, it takes it back up to 100 to 100.8. And probably an ideal would be 100.4, 100.2 even is fine. And the, the thing to know about the temperature is that if your main incubation over the entire 21 days tends to run cooler at 99 to 99.8 or even 100, your eggs are going to hatch out a day later. If it runs a little hotter, like 101 and up, and hopefully you don't ever go over 102, that's your max for chicks, then they're going to hatch a day earlier. So your 21 days mark is a guideline, not a law. It depends on the body heat of the hen in nature of what day they actually hatch out. And don't be surprised if they hatch out over two and even three days time. She continues to sit on her eggs for at least three or four days after her chicks are hatching out. And the hen knows when it's time to give up, mostly, usually. With the hubabator, you need to be aware of that hmm, part of nature rather than just this part of technology. So good luck if you're getting a hubabator. I highly recommend them. I have two of them. I have two of the exact same model. And if it weren't so we're having such a heat wave, I'd have them both running right now. But it really heats up the utility room. And as you can see by the munching on the side of this one, which thankfully did not interfere with its function. Um, if you have free ranging chickens, you, you just can't put these anywhere. <laughs> you put them down and chickens love styrofoam. They come and they pick it apart as fast as they can get their hands on it. So um, I don't even let my chickens see me carrying one of these anywhere. Um, I can't do them in the greenhouse anymore for that very reason. I keep the greenhouse door open for a uh, fluctuation of temperature and a little breeze and make it a little just more livable. And so the chickens can go in there too. Free ranging chickens go where they want to go. Or you have to fence them out of that spot. spot. And I just tend to um, choose my battles wisely, I guess I'd say. So that's the hubabater. I hope that this helps you. See you next time.